welcome. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at words that have diphthongs. And diphthongs are extremely common in Greek and in English, and it makes it important to know how to pronounce them because they are so common. And an example in English of a diphthong is the double E in seed. So diphthongs are basically two vowels that are smashed together and they form a specific sound. And in English, they can actually be kind of uh, more tricky than they are in Greek, believe it or not. So for instance, a word like this could be tear, like tearing a piece of paper, or tear, like a teardrop from your eye. A very common uh, diphthong in both English and Greek is the OI or Omicron Iota, and this is oil in English. So let's look more closely at that OI diphthong. And in English, we instinctively want to say oi as in oil. Uh, however, that's not how it's done in Greek. In the United States, there's a Greek yogurt uh, company, and it has this title, O-I-K-O-S, just like you see it here. And pretty much everybody in the United States pronounces this Greek yogurt as oikos, because we're so used to O-I being oi. Uh, however, in Greek, the O-I is actually pronounced E, like in seed. So remember, the Greeks really like the long E vowel sound. And this is actually another example of how that, that sound, that long E, is formed. So the word here, the Greek yogurt, is actually pronounced ikos, ikos. And this is our first word that we're looking at that is not a name. This is our first Greek word, and it means house. Now, some words in English that we get from ikos are economics and ecology. So economics is the law of the house, and ecology is the natural economy. Now, uh, what's interesting is that in, the, in, in English, we actually do pronounce ikos correctly in the words that we have in English from, uh, from this Greek word. So economics and ecology are pronounced like ikos. Another word uh, that you'll see in, used in churches a lot is ecumenical, and that means the inhabited world, the, the world where people live in houses. Our next example has a diphthong that has the same sound as the last one we did. Towards the end of the word, we have epsilon, iota, those two vowels. The iota wins again, and we have that long e sound. Now let's go ahead and sound this long word out. Philadelphia. Philadelphia. This is the ancient city of Philadelphia, which we have in the United States as well. Our next diphthong is actually an exception. It's going to have the alpha and the iota, and this time the iota, that long e sound, actually is not going to be dominant. This is where we're going to get our short e sound. So uh, we have the exact same diphthong in English in the word said, that A-I in said, and it forms the same uh, sound, that short E, eh, just like in the word pet. Now let's go ahead and sound this word out. E-I-T-O-S. Now in English, we don't need those last two letters. Those just uh, fall off. And in English, this is Egypt, but in Greek, it's Egyptos. The next diphthong is actually uh, much more straightforward. It's O-U. It's not ow, like ouch. It's like oo in noon. And it kind of does look like something that we would recognize in English. The O-U is oo. So we can sound this word out. Ruth. It's Ruth. The next vowel combination is 
uh, much different than we would pronounce it in English. And here's the, a Greek word, and it looks like a English word that we have, auto, like an automobile. And we have that A-U sound in English uh, very commonly, and we just pronounce it ah, uh, like auto. However, in Greek, it is not auto. That alpha is going to fall into the epsilon, and it's going to actually make an off, like after sound. So this is actually afto. So we've just seen our second Greek word that isn't a name or a place. Afto means it or itself, and it is where, in English, we get the word automobile. An automobile is something that is mobile by itself. Something that's automatic is something that can do something by itself. So, afto is it or itself. Our final diphthong that we are going to examine is the epsilon-epsilon combination. And just like the previous uh, diphthong that we looked at, the alpha epsilon, the epsilon epsilon eu is going to also have a situation where the epsilon falls into that epsilon and it makes an f sound, very similar to the one that we looked at with afto. This is f. So, with this in mind, let's go ahead and sound out this word. F Haristo, F Haristo. F Haristo is our third Greek word that's not a name or a place. And so now we're up to three words. F Haristo is how you would say thank you thousands of years ago in, a, in ancient Greece. And it's also how you would say thank you today in Greece. And that's why. Uh, I do like to do the modern pronunciation with ancient Greek because we now have a bridge between the ancient and the modern. So ancient Greek is, is not a dead language. It is something that is spoken today, and many of the exact same words that were spoken thousands of years ago are words that you would say today. So when you go into a Greek restaurant and the waitress brings you your food, you can smile and say, Efaristo. So this brings us to a familiar word that you would see uh, in a liturgy in a church, and that's Eucharist. But we now know that a Greek would pronounce this Efarist, and this means thank you. So in addition to learning how we pronounce vowel combinations called diphthongs, we now have our first three Greek words. We have ikos, which is house. We have efaristo, thank you. And we have afto, it or itself. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next lesson.